Since the dawn of time, man has pondered the impossible. It is this insatiable thirst for knowledge that has led mankind to the outer reaches of space and to the hidden depths of the ocean. But one question has stubbornly evaded being answered. Until now. If you have a cardboard box and a handful of worms, can you grow crops? Finally, we have the answer. My worms can be such drama queens. Anyhow, hello again. Remember this bin? This is the cardboard only worm bin that started out life in a side by side comparison with a tea bag only worm bin to see which single medium the worms would do better in. Uh, you'll find all the previous cardboard only worm bin updates and the tea bag only worm bins and the comparison in a playlist called Worms and Worm Bins. Uh, but I'll give you a spoiler alert the cardboard only worm bin beat the socks off the teabag only worm bin. Then a subscriber, a long time supporter and much appreciated subscriber of this channel, Poo's Mate, suggested using the vermicompost from the cardboard only worm bin, henceforth this will be referred to as vermicardboard, to grow something and see what happens. On the last video update posted in July of 2017, so just a year ago, I asked for ideas of what to grow and I got some brilliant suggestions. But after I'd harvested all the worms out of the bin and then allowed the cocoons to hatch and harvested them and then I let the bin sit for it's probably eight or nine months and let the psychrophilic bacteria carry on breaking down the cardboard, there wasn't a whole lot of cardboard left. So what I've decided to do is to go uh, with a small mix of seeds that are almost certain to germinate because that was another issue if the seeds didn't germinate was it a problem with the vermicardboard or was it a problem with the seed you wouldn't really know. So I thought yeah I'll go with a, a mix of seeds I'm pretty certain will germinate and then we can see how they grow. So the seeds I went with were radish, beetroot, lettuce and salad leaves. I'm going to plant four radish one lettuce, one beetroot and I'm going to sprinkle the top of this smallest pot with the salad leaves. So these are being planted on the 9th of June. The seeds themselves, they contain everything that they need to start life. So the seeds germinating, that's not necessarily an indicator of how good or how bad the vermicardboard is as a medium or as a source of nutrients for the growing plants. It's how they grow that's uh, going to be interesting to watch. They'll receive water only, so any nutrients that they draw up and out uh, will be coming from the vermicardboard, so there won't be anything added to these. So that's all the seeds planted and labelled, and now we just wait. Well that didn't take long, four days and the salad leaves and radish are germinated. There's nothing showing for the lettuce or beetroot yet, but that's to be expected. 13 days later and the radish are well established now. The salad leaves are growing fantastically well. The beetroot is showing its head and the lettuce is starting to come to life. Some time back I made a video on vermiconcrete. It's the nickname for what you get when you dry out very wet vermicompost too fast. It becomes very hard and I noticed today that the very top layer of the vermicardboard where it's been out in the sun is hardening in much the same way. Underneath this hardening layer the vermicardboard is still very moist. And I expect watering from the bottom uh, is going to soften this top layer. But that was a bit of a surprise. I didn't think about that or I wasn't expecting it. So that was interesting to notice. 2nd of July, so 23 days after sowing and the lettuce is definitely there now. The beetroot, that's put on quite a bit of top growth. The salad leaves are bursting out of this pot and the radish is fattening up. This netting is to keep the cats off all of the trays that are around the garden. This year has been worse than any other year for feral cats coming through and digging everything up, them and the foxes. So I've had quite an awful lot of trays um, and uh, containers, the contents dug up but disturbed. And on uh, some occasions they've used the trays as their personal bathroom. So there was nothing for it but to put nets up to try and deter them. I think it's time for a taste test. Now it is quite late at night but it's the only opportunity we had really and 
To be honest, Mrs. Worms can't wait to try out the salad leaves that were grown in cardboard only, processed by the worms. Cut some of that salad leaf and then have a little taste and tell me what you think. Mm. What's it taste like? Cardboard. Oh, yeah. It tastes alright, doesn't it? Mm, it's lovely. It's actually really nice. That is really nice. That yeah. is a proper salad, that is. Oh, try this one. I think we can say that is a definite vote of confidence for the results. What I'll do is we're going to have to eat this salad leaf now because it's very young and tender and it does taste delicious. So I'll leave the uh, big root, the lettuce and the radish to carry on growing and in a few weeks time I'll do a short quick follow up just to see what the results for those will be. Until then, thanks as always for watching. Thanks to Pooh's mate for the original idea and thanks to all of you who contributed to the video a year ago with all of your suggestions on what to grow. Sorry I didn't get to grow a lot of the things you suggested but that was really determined simply by the amount of cardboard that I had as a finished product. And now we know if all you have to hand is a cardboard box and a handful of worms as long as you're not hungry and you're prepared to wait a year, you can grow, at the very least, salad crops in plain old cardboard. Just add worms. Bye for now.